The trucks roll in, filled with rice, beans, oil, and salt. It's a welcome sight for the teenage rebel fighters who have just come out of the bush. And it's a promising sign of change. That's right. We used to steal food from the people, but that was before. Now we've stopped because we are now being given food. Burundi is at a critical moment. For the first time in 15 years, the prospects of peace look very bright. A recent ceasefire seems to be working. The last holdout rebel group has come to the negotiating table and fellow African nations are lending support. Weary Burundians hope this means 15 years of war are finally over. Like neighboring Rwanda, Burundi has suffered ethnic clashes between its Hutu and Tutsi populations. Problems started in 1993 when Tutsi military officers assassinated the country's first Hutu president, spurring violence that eventually splintered beyond the ethnic divide. Anybody during this crisis time could be threatened to death every single day. There were militias all across the country, fighting for different causes, aligned with different leaders, with civilians caught in the middle. As many as two to three hundred thousand people were killed. It's a war between brothers, so it's difficult to end because you kill one today, tomorrow another one will be recruited. That is why every rebellion ends by negotiation. The leading rebel movement, known as the FNL, is a primarily Hutu force. It's been fighting for years in the jungles and forests of Burundi. But as both the rebels and now the government are Hutus, many people are confused about what this battle is really about. The FNL leader, Agathon Gwasa, claims the country is still not truly democratic and that Hutu leaders are Tutsi pawns. The exercise of power, the army, the police, were only in hands of one ethnic group. They are exploiting others. Even as the government opened its ranks to other rebel groups, the FNL resisted cooperation and remained the lone holdout to peace talks until now. <laughs> On May 26, the FNL agreed to a ceasefire. If our chief negotiates with the government and the talks are okay, then we will be okay. <laughs> The ceasefire has been bolstered by Tanzania and South Africa, who have sent peacekeeping forces with seemingly positive effects. In small villages, government soldiers and rebel fighters are beginning to work together. Aid groups are providing food to the rebel forces as a way to keep them focused on peace. Civilians are relieved. We are very happy because they used to steal things from us, but now they are being fed by the government, something which is very good. We are very happy to see it. <laughs> Burundians hope that this moment of peace will last, but they know that they can only watch and see whether or not the rebels in the government are serious about making concessions and truly working together. <laughs> Maybe this time really is the end of the war. Obviously, I hope things will be better tomorrow than they are today. People really want to change.